Hey everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name's Jack. Today's another LEGO Weekly News update. Now, before I show you the official images of the new advent calendars, and there are going to be some spoilers, first I want to remind you about the new Marvel and DC sets that are now available on Amazon. We have almost all of them, and I will leave links in the video description below. If you want to buy these sets, I will have reviews for all of these things coming out uh, next week. And uh, let's get into the advent calendars now. All right, I'm giving you a basic countdown before this picture becomes fully in focus. Three, two, one. Okay, here is the first advent calendar. We've got our Star Wars one. The exclusive minifigs have been announced before in a previous news episode, and I believe this box artwork has been shown off as well. But this next picture here, the picture of the back of the box, has not been shown off. But here is the main picture that's really going to ruin things for you if you want to be surprised, and this is the entire set of new things for the calendar. The two exclusive figs from the set that I think will be the most sought after are first the white Chewbacca, which is pretty awesome. He definitely looks like a snow yeti. That was a really good choice. And we also have what might be a gunmetal or pearl gray version of a protocol droid. Aside from that, we actually get quite a few figs. There's another Luke Skywalker included here. And some of the mini builds are starting to look really good. We get a new Slave 1. I see a Jedi Starfighter. That might be the first mini TIE Interceptor. But I think I'm most looking forward to the Tantive 4 and that new brown gonk droid. Next are the official images for the LEGO City Advent Calendar. By the way, these images are coming from Amazon France. I will leave links in the description below. And I'm not sure if there's any exclusive minifigs in this set, but we do get a lot of really nice little builds. We get a snowmobile build that looks nice. It's also kind of a snowplow. And there's a lot of really nice scenes. There's a firefighter baking cookies. And we even have a firefighter band as well. There's several small builds for toys. This kind of seems like a perfect add-on set for your winter toy shop. Also, we get kids playing ice hockey, which I think is something we haven't seen in LEGO for a while. Last advent calendar there are images for is the Friends one. The sets in this theme usually come with a lot of accessories, and the advent calendar here shows no exception to that. There's only too many doll figs included, and as you can see, there's a ton of little scenarios. They almost seem like vignettes, some of them, and it certainly can add a lot more activities to your friends' sets. And moving away from everything that has to do with the holidays, it is still the season for rumors, and this week specifically for Marvel Super Heroes 2017. Over on the Eurobricks forum, Just Too Good, as well as Amazing Bricks and Sir Gareth have uh, sort of confirmed that the next season of Marvel sets will include an Agent Coulson set with his car Lola, and we're also going to get an Iron Man set that has Detroit Steel as a big fig. According to the rumors, Agent Coulson is not going to be the one that we know from the S.H.I.E.L.D. show or the movies, but instead it's going to be based on his character from the comics. Same with his car. I don't know about you guys, but I am really looking forward to a build for Lola. Now we already have an image of what Detroit Steel looks like from the Marvel Avengers video game, so you can guess that the big fig is probably going to look pretty darn similar to this guy. And I for one am pretty happy about this news just because we're getting more new characters as opposed to sort of reiterations of old guys we already have. Okay, that is just my two cents about it, but let's check out a closer look, I suppose, to the new Minecraft Fortress set. This is set number 2127, and on the LEGO Minecraft Facebook page, they posted a new video that goes goes way more in depth onto what this set really includes. And I gotta say, the Minecraft theme is really doing a good job lately. The village set was awesome, and I feel like they're really coming into their own with this fortress. First of all, it does come with some new exclusive stuff. Steve's legs are gold now, so he can have a full set of gold armor, which is cool. And there is a new piece for the head for the horse, which we have never had before. But the truly impressive thing about this set is just how easily modifiable it really is. It's entirely made of modules, and uh, you can can move them around in pretty much any way, shape, or form to create towers, walls, and just about anything, really. It's hard to describe if you don't watch the video, and I will leave a link for it, but it just feels like this fortress set is a little bit more accessible, and probably the most mod-friendly of any of the Minecraft sets so far. Now, moving down the line for LEGO news, I did mention last week that Bionicle is ending in 2016. The theme is over. It would only really lasted for 2015 and 16 after it was rebooted. But there is one final build challenge that's kind of a send-off for the theme. It is the Makuta challenge. You can see the full detail details on Rebrick, but basically all you have to do is create a really evil version, uh, your version of what you think Makuta looks like or should look like, and you take a picture of it, send it to Rebrick, and there are prizes. There will be three first place winners that will get a LEGO Bionicle art book signed by the Bionicle team, as well as the entire assortment of 2015 and 2016 LEGO Bionicle sets. There will also be another three winners that don't get the book, but they do get the full assortment of Bionicle sets. 
The deadline is September 5th if you are interested in this contest, and I will leave a link in the video description below. And with that, I think it is time to move on to LEGO Ideas. If you don't know what LEGO Ideas is, it's a website in which you submit your own LEGO creations in hopes to having it become an official LEGO set this week. One new set got 10,000 supporters, which means it's now in the review stage. The set is called Women of NASA by 20 Tory. It celebrates five different women of science, technology, engineering, and math, and it comes with both a display case for the minifigs as well as four different vignettes. I'm liking the build for the little shuttle there, as well as the build for the display case. And this is yet another one of the science sets that's been voted in for LEGO Ideas. Now with the last bits of news, there's a few current things happening this month that you might want to know about. Namely, starting today and ending on the 8th, there is double VIP points for any sets that you buy in the stores or on the LEGO shop online. Also something I saw on thebrickfan.com, there is a Toys R Us free building event. This is going to happen on August 27th at 12pm, and the build is going to be a Captain America mosaic. All right, and I think we've finished off the news, so let's jump into some of the cool custom creations that people happen to be building throughout the week. This first one here is a pit droid by Nobu Terry. These guys were running around all over the shop on Tatooine in the uh, episode one, Phantom Menace. The body looks great, but the pieces used for the head really, really pull it together. This same artist also just recently uploaded this steampunk gun here. You can see it's a pretty creative shape and a nice use of parts that you don't usually see being used aesthetically. I think my favorite part of the build is probably the whip piece being used as the trigger guard. This next build is called Kiko's Existential Crisis. Some of you might be familiar with this little guy. He's been a reoccurring character in several of Peter Reed's builds in the past. And if you can't remember who Peter Reed's is, he's the guy that did the exo suit for Lego Ideas. Anyways, this latest build is really clever. All the parts that make up Kiko come in what you would normally get from a model set, and everything here is built out of Lego. You can almost feel the sort of shock and awe and possibly horror of this little character by seeing all the parts that make him up just sitting there in a mold ready for assembly. This is a great little nostalgic build. We have a couple of Rock'em Sock'em Bobots built by Bruce Lowell. This was a really great game to play as a kid and probably still pretty fun to play today, though I haven't seen one of these things for quite a while. Maybe they still make them, I'm not sure. Anyways, they really got the uh, minifig boxing characters to look really good. I like what they did for the heads. And this is just a really fun, clean little build. This is another fantastic ship build by Thomas W, and it is appropriately named X-Plane. What I'm liking here is not just the creative design for the wings, which of course is the most eye-catching part, at least immediately, but it's how the builder managed to kind of fit a very smooth, very sleek sort of build style in here. Yet in the back, we've got an extremely strange looking engine with these pistons kind of sticking out everywhere. And it goes right along with this jagged propeller in the back that's made up of these damaged swords. It gives a lot more personality to what is otherwise a very clean and stylish build. This build here is called Adam by Trema. And out of all of these figures made from the uh, buildable figure pieces, this one here has one of the nicest and most elegant styles I've seen. There's a nice proportion to some of the limbs. I really like how the forearms go into the hands, but what I really appreciate is how the neck goes up towards the head. Perhaps the pieces didn't lend themselves to look quite right for a sort of regular proportional neck, so instead the builder found a way to make the disproportion look very elegant. It somewhat reminds me from the creatures in Avatar, but it's really just kind of a humanoid in and of itself. There's also something just very pleasing about seeing this thing in all white. It definitely adds to the elegance. This last one here is called Snowspeeder by Monsterphonic, and this is quite an awesome build for a freeze frame of action, and I'm just blown away by the excellent effect that this snow flying in every direction build has sort of made. And don't get me wrong, the rest of the build is nice, but this is the Arkham train station. It shows a nice use of colors, I like the snow hanging off the edge of the roof there, and the train itself is also built incredibly well. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember to tune in same time next week for another LEGO Weekly News update, and we will see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!